Hello, my name is Damien Hughes and I'm the proud author of the five steps to a winning mindset book. This is a study of the methods of the world's greatest sports coaches and asks how do they do what they do? Most importantly, it's about how you can use their methods for your own benefit. Now I'd like to introduce you to the STEPS model. This film is about the E of the STEPS acronym, emotion. A Dr. David Adam, a famous neuroscientist, once said that only a fool or a liar will tell you how the brain works. It may only weigh a little over a kilo, but it is a kilo of such complexity containing a whole lifetime of memories that mere facts don't do it justice. James Watson, who won the Nobel Prize for helping to discover DNA, described the human brain as the most complex thing we have yet discovered in our universe. However, for all of the brain's complexity, we know that it isn't of one mind. Although psychologists have learned a lot about these systems in recent years, mankind has always been aware of the tension that exists between them. The Greek philosopher Plato, for example, said that in our heads we have a rational charioteer who has to rein in an unruly horse. Sigmund Freud wrote about the selfish id and the conscientious superego, and also about the ego which mediates between them. Behavioural economists of the two systems, the planner and the doer. And more recently, Daniel Kahneman has labelled them System 1 and System 2 in his groundbreaking book Thinking Fast and Slow. My favourite analogy is the one used by the University of Virginia psychologist Jonathan Haidt in his wonderful book The Happiness Hypothesis. Haidt says that our emotional brain is like an elephant and our rational brain is simply its rider. The rider sits perched atop the elephant. The rider holds the reins and tries to read the map in order to appear to be the leader. Now this analogy works because most of us are all too familiar with real life situations in which our elephant overpowers our rider. If you've ever slept in, overeaten, dialed up your ex at midnight, procrastinated, tried to quit smoking and failed, skipped the gym, got angry and said something you've regretted, abandoned the night class, gone food shopping when you're hungry, refused to speak up in a meeting because you were scared and so on. Now all great coaches have got their stories of the talented athlete who never quite achieved their potential. And it's understanding why this is that has the relevance for all of us. Sir Graham Henry, the coach of the New Zealand All Black Rugby team, suggests that this understanding is critical. Think of a winning mindset as one of four legs needed. If you think of physical conditioning, technical understanding and tactical appreciation as forming three of the legs, the stool isn't balanced unless you have psychological strength as well. Coaches know that once we can understand what is happening inside our heads, we can then know what to do to manage our emotions to the best effect. I once interviewed Emmanuel Stewart, who was the coach of the famous Kronk Boxing Gym in Detroit, which produced over 20 world champions. He explained to me that in order to create a culture in, where pe in which people are expected to perform under pressure, he adopted a two-step approach, which not only reinforces this two brains in one model, but it also works at an empirical level as well. He said to me, to teach, you have to learn to contain before you can explain. And it doesn't work in any other order. Now the book shows you the four top most effective methods about how you do this and how that will help you develop a winning mindset for the benefit of you and your teams. I hope you'll read it and I hope you'll enjoy it.